king is enthroned in majesty and splendor. We come before him to adore him and to pledge our allegiance to him. As we celebrate the last Sunday of the liturgical year, the feast of Christ the King. Lord Jesus, be the King and center of our hearts. We surrender our hearts to you. Rule over our lives. Cherished beloved viewers, welcome to the royal edition of Laudate Dominum. I am Philomena Esi Esuman, your presenter. Today, we have with us the Immaculate Conception Choir from St. John the Baptist Parish, Pedu Cape Coast. They are here to sing praises to our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. So sit tight as you listen to such songs as Rejoice, the Lord is King. Crown him with many crowns. Oh, for a thousand thanks. And lastly, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Stay tuned. Rejoice, rejoice again. Oh. 
Conception Choir was initially formed as a singing band in the 1950s. In 1980, the late Mr. Lawrence Saba took over from his father, Mr. John F.A. Saba, because of old age. Mr. Saba worked so hard and attracted more young men and women to join the singing band. In consultation with the patrons and patronesses, he then changed the name of the group to Guild. Thus was in 1980. Later on, following the advice and in consultation with very Reverend Father Maurice Jim, the then priest in charge of music in the Archdiocese of Cape Coast, the guild was admitted into the choir union and named Immaculate Conception Choir in the year 2000. The choir has seen maestros like Mr. J.D. Atto Brown, Dr. Eric Debra Autry, Mr. Michael Atto Grant, and Mr. Kennedy Kunedu. The choir is currently directed by Mr. Nathaniel K. Hagen with support from Mr. Oscar Odro Jan. The choir continues to sing for us Christ is the King, Babyara Embre Evia Oshren, and Abu Christ. Stay tuned.
us to listen to a word of exhortation from the priest in charge, which will be followed by these anthems. All hail and the King of glory be with us. Hello, royal people of God. The peace of the universal king be with you. Today is Royal Sunday as we celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King. And I reflect with you on the theme, the dependable king, the reliable king. The feast or the solemnity of Christ the King was instituted in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. 1925 is a period that follows the First World War and it was a time that governments were in economic chaos, unemployment was rampant and people were literally starving. Pessimism, a sense of helplessness and hopelessness compounded by hatred among nations was overwhelming. At the time, people were clinging to dictators. And this was a time that with a widespread hunger and famine, people lost hope and people were struggling to find food to eat. This was a time when the philosophies of, of fascism National, commun national so Socialism, what we call the Nazis, and Communism was, was rising. And that gave rise to such individuals as Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, and Joseph Stalin. The situation at the time forced people to follow these tyrants and these dictators once you promised to show them a way out of this economic chaos, once you promised to put food on their table, they followed you because they needed food at the time. The resultant effect of this was that they were struggling to be self-sufficient and they left God out of the picture. This was the time that Pope Pius the 11th was reigning. Some political regimes even advocated that Christ be excluded out of the picture, not only from the society, but even from the family. This was the pastoral situation faced by Pope Pius XI. And so, he responded first by dedicating his papacy to the reign of Christ, to the peace of Christ. And this is what he showed the peace of Christ in the reign of Christ. And in that year, 1925, the church at the time was celebrating the 1,600th anniversary of the Council of Nicaea. It is at the council that we had the Nicene Creed, which we profess every Sunday. And over there, they established the divinity of Christ. And in the Nicene Creed, which we pray every Sunday, there is a phrase that his kingdom will never end. His kingdom has no end. And so the Pope sought throughout the year to remind the people of the supremacy of Christ, his kingship, and that his kingdom will have no end. And so on December 11th in that jubilee year, he issued an encyclical, Quas Primas, in which he instituted this feast, the solemnity of Christ the King. This feast was to be celebrated at the last Sunday of October. This was strategically decided because a week after that, we celebrated the All Saints Day. And four weeks after that was the first Sunday of Advent. And so, the theology was that Christ was not only king of the world, but also king, the eternal king who was glorified and celebrated by the saints and who would come again to judge the living and the dead. This feast was however changed at the time of Pope Paul VI in 1969 to the last Sunday of November which we celebrate now to 
commemorate Christ who is the universal king. So today we celebrate Christ, the universal king. Christ the king of kings, Christ the king of the world. An ideal king is a symbol of unity because he unites his kingdom. He brings the members of his kingdom together. And so today, as we celebrate Christ the king, we celebrate one who unites us. He unites our body with our soul, with our spirit, every aspect of our being, and he makes us one. That unity helps us not to be divided individuals so that we can follow his precepts, so that we can follow his steps, that we can, with all our minds, follow his precepts. He is a dependable king, a king who leads us to victory. Paul will make us aware that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities. But the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is for the King of Kings. And so today as we celebrate him, we remember that Christ is a dependable king, one we can rely on, one who can bring us victory, one who can bring us every blessings of the spiritual places. A king provides for his people providence. Our king, the universal king, is the source of all blessings. He gives us our needs, he provides our needs, and he gives us everything we desire. This is our king. He is dependable in the sense that whenever we come to him, we get whatever we need. He is our provider and he's always there to provide for us. What then is in this for us? The subject must always respect the king. And so today as we celebrate Christ the king, we come to pay allegiance to him. We come to respect him. We come to obey his precepts. We come to show how submissive we are to him. We come to adore him and we come to venerate him as the universal king. My dear friends in Christ, as we celebrate Christ the king, remember that Christ is there for you. Christ will provide for you. Christ will protect you because he is the king who is our protector. He will provide for you all our needs. He will be with us and he will unite every division in us so that with a peace of mind we can follow him and do his work. My dear friend, if Christ is not a king of your heart, then today take Christ and enthrone him in your heart. Enthrone Christ in your family. Enthrone Christ in your marriage. Enthrone Christ in your work for success to be your portion, for victory to be your portion, for joy to be your portion. May Christ reign in your heart today. May Christ reign in your marriage today. May Christ be your source of protection today. May Christ be with you and grant you victory in everything that you do. May God bless and keep you. Amen.
Thank you, Father, for the word. It's now time for us to put on our dancing shoes as the choir treat us to Nyami ye ohin, Nyami ye osahin, and ohin oribo. Stay tuned.
are gradually coming to the end of today's edition of Laudate Domino. So viewers, why don't you also pick your handkerchief and put on your dancing shoes as you join the choir in singing these danceables. Eraze Wahinzosun, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Wombo no Seye. Until we come your way again next week, it's bye.
Oh, oh, oh.